the rise of Octavian from youth to heir. Gaius Octavius, later known as Augustus, was born in 63 BC into a wealthy and well-connected family. His great-uncle was Julius Caesar, a powerful general and politician. Octavian's early life was comfortable but unremarkable. He received a traditional Roman education and showed promise in rhetoric and military strategy. His life changed dramatically when Caesar adopted him as his son and heir in 44 BC. This decision would have profound consequences for Octavian and the future of Rome. Caesar's assassination in the same year thrust Octavian into the center of Roman politics. Only 18 years old, he faced powerful rivals vying for control of Rome. Mark Antony, Caesar's loyal lieutenant, and Marcus Lepidus, a powerful general, were among the contenders. Octavian, despite his youth and inexperience, proved to be a shrewd and ambitious politician. He skillfully navigated the treacherous waters of Roman politics, forging alliances and outmaneuvering his opponents. The Second Triumvirate, a pact forged in blood. Octavian, Antony and Lepidus formed the Second Triumvirate in 43 BC. This uneasy alliance aimed to avenge Caesar's death and restore order to the Roman Republic. The Triumvirate's power was absolute and they ruthlessly pursued their enemies. They initiated proscriptions, lists of individuals declared enemies of the state whose property was confiscated and lives were forfeit. Thousands of Romans, including senators and wealthy citizens, were killed or forced into exile. The Triumvirate's reign of terror culminated in the Battle of Philippi in 42 BC. Octavian and Antony faced the combined forces of Brutus and Cassius, Caesar's assassins. The battle was a decisive victory for the Triumvirate, cementing their control over Rome. Brutus and Cassius, defeated and despairing, took their own lives. The victory at Philippi eliminated their main rivals and paved the way for Octavian's eventual rise to sole power. The defeat of Antony and Cleopatra, securing sole power. The Second Triumvirate was always an alliance of convenience destined to unravel. Tensions grew between Octavian and Antony, fueled by ambition and mistrust. Antony's relationship with Cleopatra, the Queen of Egypt, further strained their alliance. Octavian, a master of propaganda, portrayed Antony as a captive of Cleopatra's charms, abandoning Rome for the allure of the East. The Roman people, fearing the influence of a foreign queen, rallied behind Octavian. The final showdown came in 31 BC at the Battle of Actium, a naval engagement off the coast of Greece. Octavian's forces, commanded by the skilled general Agrippa, decisively defeated the combined fleets of Antony and Cleopatra. The victory at Actium marked the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. Antony and Cleopatra fled to Egypt, where they both committed suicide a year later. Octavian was now the undisputed master of Rome. Augustus, not emperor, the illusion of the Republic. Octavian, acutely aware of the fate of his adoptive father, understood the dangers of appearing too ambitious. He carefully avoided the title of king or dictator, titles that held negative connotations in Roman society. Instead, he presented himself as the restorer of the Republic, a humble servant of the Senate and the people of Rome. He shrewdly maintained the outward forms of the Republic, preserving the Senate and other institutions. However, behind this facade of republicanism, Octavian consolidated his power. He acquired key titles such as Princeps, meaning first citizen, and Augustus, meaning revered one. These titles conferred supreme authority while maintaining the illusion of Republican continuity. He also assumed the title of Imperator, from which the word Emperor is derived. This title, originally a military honorific, became synonymous with supreme power. Section 5, the Pax Romana, a golden age of peace and prosperity. Augustus's reign ushered in a period of unprecedented peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. After decades of civil war and unrest, the Roman world enjoyed a period of stability and order. Augustus's reign saw the end of major conflicts within the empire, and his armies focused on securing the borders and expanding Roman territory. He transformed the Roman army from a citizen militia into a professional force. This period of peace and stability facilitated economic growth and cultural flourishing. Trade routes flourished, connecting distant corners of the empire, 
Roman culture, art and literature thrived, laying the foundation for centuries of Western civilization. The Pax Romana was a golden age for Rome. It was a testament to Augustus's political skills, his military reforms and his ability to bring peace to a war-torn world. Section 6, Architectural and Urban Renewal, Transforming Rome's Landscape. Augustus famously boasted, I found Rome a city of brick and left it a city of marble. This statement reflected his ambitious building program, which transformed the city of Rome. He commissioned grand temples, theatres and public buildings, showcasing the empire's wealth and power. He renovated and expanded the forum, the heart of Roman political and social life, and constructed the Pantheon, a temple dedicated to all gods which still stands today as a testament to Roman engineering prowess. His building projects were not merely about beautification, they served a political purpose. Grand public works provided employment, appeased the masses and fostered a sense of civic pride. They also served as powerful propaganda, showcasing the emperor's generosity and piety. Augustus's urban renewal projects transformed Rome from a sprawling, chaotic city into a grand imperial capital, reflecting Rome's newfound status as the centre of a vast empire. Section 7. Social Legislation, Morality and the Ideal Roman Family Augustus was a social conservative who believed in the importance of traditional Roman values. He enacted a series of social reforms aimed at restoring morality and strengthening the traditional Roman family. He passed laws promoting marriage and childbirth, offering rewards to couples with multiple children and penalties for those who remained unmarried or childless. He also implemented laws against adultery and sought to curb extravagance and luxury. These moral reforms, while presented as a return to traditional values, were also a means of social control. By encouraging marriage and childbearing, Augustus aimed to increase the population, providing a larger pool of citizens for the army and the workforce. His emphasis on family values resonated with many Romans who longed for a return to stability and order after decades of civil unrest. Section 8, The Succession Problem, Ensuring the Future of the Principate. One of Augustus's most pressing challenges was ensuring the smooth succession of power. He had no natural son and had to navigate complex family dynamics to secure the future of his dynasty. He ultimately chose Tiberius, his stepson, from his third wife Livia as his heir. Tiberius was a capable general and administrator but lacked Augustus's charisma and political skills. To prepare Tiberius for leadership, Augustus granted him increasing responsibilities and involved him in governing the empire. He also designated other members of his family, such as his grandsons Gaius and Lucius, as potential successors. However, their premature deaths forced him to reconsider his plans. The succession question was a persistent concern for Augustus, and his efforts to secure the future of his dynasty shaped the political landscape of the early Roman Empire. Section 9, The Legacy of Augustus, Emperor, God and Architect of Empire. Augustus died in AD 14 at the age of 75. After a long and eventful reign, he left behind a stable and prosperous empire, a legacy that would endure for centuries. He is remembered as one of the most successful rulers in history. He transformed Rome from a republic to an empire, laying the foundation for the Pax Romana, a period of unprecedented peace and prosperity. His Political acumen, military reforms and administrative genius left an indelible mark on Western civilization. Augustus's legacy is complex and multifaceted. He was a ruthless politician who eliminated his rivals to secure his power. He was also a skilled administrator who reformed the Roman government, legal system and military. He was a patron of the arts and architecture, transforming Rome into a grand imperial capital. He was revered as a god after his death and his name became synonymous with imperial power. Section 10, August, a month named for a godlike figure. The month of August stands as a testament to Augustus's enduring legacy. Originally named Sextilis in the Roman calendar, it was renamed August in 8 BC to honor Augustus. This change was more than just a symbolic gesture. It reflected Augustus's immense power and the profound impact he had on Roman society. The month of August, with its association with harvest and abundance, became linked to Augustus's reign. 
a period of peace and prosperity. The name August, derived from the Latin word Augustus, meaning consecrated or venerable, reflects the divine honors bestowed upon him after his death. Just as July, named after Julius Caesar, precedes August, so too did Caesar's legacy pave the way for Augustus's reign. The renaming of Sectilis to August cemented Augustus's place in the Roman pantheon of gods and emperors. It serves as a perpetual reminder of his transformation of Rome, his impact on the Roman calendar, and his enduring legacy as the founder of the Roman